Hey, thanks for joining us here on Fix Your Fault Live. I'm Nick, you can call me Dragon. And I'm Connie, and you can call me Nighthawk. You rode with that pretty I well. I did, yeah. Um, so the show producers said that we have to start talking more about ourselves so people can get to know us. Okay. My story's boring, but uh, hard-hitting question for you. What's your favorite color? Hmm, that's a tough one. I have to think about that. I don't well, know if I want to share that with you. you. Is it too personal? Too personal. All right. Well, you were was expecting something better than that. But all right. Let's look at golf swings instead. Yeah. Uh, it was let's a good try. That. All right. You want to start at a address with this fine gentleman? Uh, do you remember anything about his problems? I um, do not. Yes. He wants to hit it very, very Ah, uh, he wants to bomb it. Okay. Yes. Got it. Who doesn't want to bomb it? Distance is everything. Okay. Uh, address. And then we have Cameron Champ up here, who Cameron's a good model if you want to bomb it because he bombed it. So let's do the top of the swing, and we just have this one view, I think, that's uh, super helpful anyway. All right, so show everyone at home, because they're going to cut to the, your holding the iPad, mm -hmm. the club face angle and his lead wrist. So he's got his left wrist fairly flat, standardish, normal, yeah, and the club I'm face sure is close to the, uh, the actual... Wow, what is that what? kind of line? Yeah, I'm sorry. One thing we've learned, Connie cannot draw lines or circles. Good job. All right. How's that? Favorite color yet? You get that? No, we'll Still keep going. About it? Okay. We'll keep going. All right, so the face angle, uh, usually, if you wanted to call it fairly square, would be even to your left arm. Maybe a touch more close than that, and close being aimed towards the sky. This one's close to the his lead arm, maybe off 60, 70 degrees. It's turned more closed. So I'd start by saying his grip is probably turned too far to the right uh, to make this happen. This doesn't mean that we need to start changing things. It's just an observation. He's got a, a very strong grip by that vernacular. Okay, let's do the downswing. Someone who wants to bomb it may have some deficiencies here. Okay, so now we're down where your lead arm's parallel to the ground. You've probably heard this story before. Let's do Cameron Champ in the same spot. So his lead arm's a little bit lower at the top, and then when his left arm is parallel to the ground, now you can start to see some differences. You've got a, uh, the shaft for Cameron is more horizontal than vertical, which is a change from the, the swing on the left. And now we have a problem. So this is when your swing direction is being programmed to hit across the ball. This is bad. So the way that people avoid that, well, sometimes they don't. Two options. You can keep doing it, slice across the ball 10 degrees or more. That would be really bad. I'm guessing he doesn't do that. Or you have to stop turning, side bend a lot to the right, keep your trail elbow very bent, and try to get the shaft to almost be 90 degrees to the ground at impact to shift your swing direction in and out. Good so far? Oh, yeah. What do you think happens? I think that's the second one that happens you think here. it's the latter. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Oh, look at that. Okay. So that's actually a pretty good frame right there. Uh, I'd like you to draw a circle around the club and the ball. Think you can do that? Oh, yeah. Favorite color? That Not is the yet. club that is, okay, Wh which sorry. Club? There's, there's maybe, a, uh... maybe be more clear. Down here at the bottom, there's a club and a ball that just hit each other. Let's do that one. Hey. That was my fault. I didn't mean to trick how you up there? with these fancy English words. Okay, so you see how that is ready to drill the toe of the club. Might have missed the grooves even. Hits the shiny part of the club. They're not really built for that. Let's do the same, uh, just go down to seven with, uh, with Cameron. One more. You're so close, you got it. Okay, perfect. Uh, right there. All right, close enough. You notice how the grip end of the club, how it's lower to the ground, it's closer to him. He has his arms, his lead arm still stretched out, his right arm is straighter. All of that's helping him extend the, the radius of the swing, stretch it out farther, hits the middle of the club. This uh, poor gentleman has the shaft so high, his trail elbow so bent, that now the radius of the swing is, or the club head itself is just way too close to him. He's got to stretch that out more, and actually stretch it out more by straightening your right arm, lowering the shaft, and like you had it at address, and you can reach the club out more degrees. So what do you do? Go back to the downswing, and it starts with the top of the swing, and the first move down is to push your arm out too many degrees. You need to get into the side bend to the right sooner, and feel like your uh, your elbow is really still pinned across your chest for a longer time on the downswing to avoid pushing your elbow out away from your chest too much. That lead arm abduction is a problem here. Good with that? Yeah, sounds okay. good. All right, should we do something like that? For sure. All right. What do you need me to help you with? I or you got it? would like you to stand there. Don't fall down. Okay. Okay, good so far. Grab that club. And then can you hold it out like this? Pretty much where I'm at at address. 
little bit more. Great job. Yep. There you go. Just don't hit me. No. I'm These not. are new shoes. No by promises. The way. Those look good. They're almost as nice as mine. Are you sure about that? Almost. Okay. So a way you could practice would be on the backswing. I would jam like uh, some T's under your arms. I'll do that here in a second. Squeeze your arms really close to your torso, and then coming down, or Connie's going to lower the shaft like three more inches. On the way down, you need to be able to make a rehearsal swing where you can fit your arms and the shaft underneath the one that she's holding out here. The opposite of that would be to have your downswing start by pushing your arm out, try to stand the shaft up, and you can see how I'm in a world of, of pain on how I'm going to bang into her arm and hit her just like she didn't want me to. Those are nice shoes. They look so clean. Okay, so I'd start with just like little tiny chip shots, only because this has a club head on it. Squeeze your arms real close together, hit the shot, keep the shaft down, and then I'd put a camera right where this camera is, uh, fire up your Golf Tech app, and use the swing capture feature to compare that swing, which you could do to one down the line, and you should start recognizing your trail arm is straighter, the shaft is lower, and how you would be able to differentiate that versus the trail arm bent and the shaft really high. A good way for people to practice all the time anyway would be to just, uh, if there's a one kind of blanket practice you could do as a golfer, especially if you slice, just learning how to hit a shot with tees under your arms. That's good, you're really confused right now, aren't you? I am very okay. confused. Just hit the ball with the tee under your arms, each one, and that starts to make it really hard for you to raise your arms and flex at your shoulder and get your elbows. I was, very, I was just very concerned about my shoes. Did you think I was gonna be able to keep those in? No. No, okay. Good. Good. Didn't think Thanks you had the, the skills confidence. to keep them in. Thanks for the confidence. What should we do next? All right. Is that we it? Have... Are we done? Wrap it up. We have Dylan. Next. See you next week. Dylan? Okay. What does Dylan do? Oh, I remember this one. Okay. Yes. So Dylan didn't tell us much about his game. Uh, can you load up? Um, do you do camera? From the front? Camera champ? Yep. Again from the front? Okay. That'd be fine. So I do remember this swing. Let's look at, oh, Harris English would be fine. I see that that one on there. Stop taking this club, I need this club. All right, and then uh, let's do the top of the swing. So I'm just gonna do like some general tidying up here since I know nothing about Dylan's game. First at a dress, looks pretty similar. We've got Harris English here flipped left-handed thanks to our friends at Ping for supplying this video because it's a, it's a really good one to copy. And the camera angles are even a little bit off, but relative to one another, they're pretty well lined up. Let's do the top of the swing. So this is Dylan. All right, so Dylan, uh, you have a, a movement with your lead arm that you can do across your chest. You notice how, um, I don't know if you can zoom in here at all or not anyway, but think of the belt up and you might notice some differences in there. You notice how the grip end of the club and how you can see um, uh, his lead arm, Harris's lead arm, and how yours is starting to disappear behind your head. So you have this movement with your lead arm, this across your chest. This is adduction of your arm. What uh, Harris English does throughout his swing, he starts with his lead arm almost at a right angle to his shoulder. So if he connected right shoulder, left shoulder, uh, lead elbow, lead wrist, 90 degree angle. Uh, as the swing progresses in the beginning of the swing, a lot of players either keep this angle the same or they actually make it a little bit more obtuse until the shaft is parallel to the ground. And that's where your the turning of your torso and your hips is going faster than how far you move your arm across your chest. Now, uh, from there, then it starts to progressively just adduct across your chest and 45 degrees is a pretty good number. That's about what you see in Harris English here. I'll try not to break a TV. So that's how far he moves his arm across his chest. You can see this angle from my like the center of my neck to my shoulder to my elbow, how that's looking closer to 45 degrees from that camera view. Well, for you to make the swing longer, you keep adducting your arm across your chest all the way to the point where it might almost match your shoulders. That's a hard move to do. You have to really protract your lead shoulder and it requires some flexibility, but you don't know how to stop that. The way you stop doing that, or first to demonstrate what that would look like, if I just keep doing the adduction, my swing just keeps getting longer. Fred Couples was really good at that. Other players who almost have a lead arm that's vertical to the ground, that's how they did it. The way that you stop doing that, so it's starting to look more like uh, Harris's, is how you keep your trail arm straighter. That limits how much you can adduct your arm. The more you start to flex your trail arm and the more that your shoulder protract or retracts as a result, the more you have room to continue to adduct your arm across your chest. 
so the feel there if you wanted to start having um, this look a little bit more coordinated at the top and we'll look at the bottom of the swing and why you need to do this would be to feel like your trail arm is just really straight i might even hit balls where you thought it was straight and then from practice i know that if you feel like your right arm is very straight chances are you're probably going to end at 90 degrees or a little uh, less or more acute than that even less of an angle um, that's why you have to feel like it's really straight because you've got this pretty well built into your swing where this is a problem is that on the downswing, if I move my lead arm across my chest much more than like a tour player does, and 45 degrees is about what most do for all their clubs, uh, the more you move it this way across your chest and you continue to adduct, now I've got to move it even more on the downswing to get the shaft of the club far enough forward to keep my swing direction straight and not hit behind the ball with an iron. Because if I don't have enough lead arm adduction, I'm really just programming my swing to smash the club in uh, to the ground. When the ball's on a tee, you can just turn more, and that pushes the shaft forward. But uh, I think you're going to see this as a challenging one. I think he probably struggles with hitting the ball off the ground, but I would expect a lot of pushes and uh, toe balls and cuts this way too. So let's do like a, you can just go straight to seven here. That took a long time to explain. Um, and then can you try to connect a dot or a line between lead elbow, lead shoulder, trail shoulder? That can be angular or not. It's pretty easy to see. And then do the same thing with Harris. So you'll see Harris didn't load the adduction of his lead arm as far across his chest, and now he's unloaded the abduction back to about where he had it at address. He's got his lead elbow a little bit more bent than where it started, but that's for another day. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, the way you've done this, Dylan, you overloaded the lead arm adduction, and then now you don't have the abduction coming down fast enough. So that's why at the top of the swing it should, be, um, should feel very tight and control like your arms aren't even hardly moving your backswing is kind of driven more by the turning of your shoulders and your hips and not your arms crossing across your chest oh yeah okay so the way i might hit one of those as ridiculous as this is i would set up from you could put your camera on that face on view to do it that way and i'll hit a shot but this is what i'm gonna try to do from the front view i'll make a swing where i don't bend my right arm at all I'll try to just move the club back as far as I can with the turning of my, my back to the target and move, move, twisting around my torso and then just hitting it with a full swing. It'll look pretty crazy to the camera from the side view, but that's a way that you're starting to drill in not to overflex your arm. It's a great shot. You've said so much today. What do you um, think? It's a great shot there. Uh, how about the color? Still there? It's still, still red. Thinking? Red? Yeah, it's red. Red is not my favorite color. Oh, take okay. a take another guess. I'm waiting for your favorite color. I'm not guessing anymore. Rainbow. Is that your favorite color? Yes. Double rainbows. Uh, you haven't asked mine, but we'll maybe we maybe you'll get to where you'll you'll share as well. Okay. Uh, what's his name? Dom. Dom. Yeah. D O M. Okay. D O M. It's just fun to hear you say that. Okay. What's he do? Um, he's ex-military or military buddy of uh, Brian's. Is that a question mark? That's what I was told. As a period, okay, statement. All right. Uh, who oh, would you like we did there? look at his swing. Okay. Yeah. Um, who did we talk about here from the side view? I don't know. You take a look at it. Uh, so we'll watch this one. So problem here. This was a fun one that was sent in from social. It was looked like every other golfer. Too bad we can't get the audio in here. So after he hits this, there's a bit of an expletive yes should we say because the result of the shot should we just run through it just yeah. let everyone see I just what it is kind of see there's the ball put yeah. my finger on the ball it's very steady camera work whoever did this was great here's where the divot starts and you can see the swing direction is pretty tremendously across the ball and then he swears and i'll say that but probably not till we're done yep. uh okay so let's do the top of the swing so first Lead arm really high in the air. Now, unlike our other person who had to hit the ball with the shaft really high, mm -hmm. is the face very open relative to his lead arm. That's twisted too much. So too much extension in the lead wrist, over twisting the arm. Could be his grip isn't turned. The face should be more closed here. And did you find anybody from the side view? Yeah, we can go with Cameron again. Okay, that's fine. He's a good one for a lot of these things. He is always a very good one. You got Rory McIlroy in there. That would be good too with a driver. Do you want a driver iron? I just want to see something up there. Nothing? I thought you were going to come back at me there. Okay, yeah. do four with him then. You're doing a great job. This Thank is not you. as easy as it looks, is it? 
No, I have to understand your English. So it's really hard for me. Wow. Okay. That's minus proper. You talk like a, like a weirdo. So you notice how close together his arms are here and how his trail elbow is bent about 90 degrees or so, even from this camera angle where you've got his, his uh, arm changing orientation relative to the camera. You can still see it's not as flexed as much. So keeping your arms a little closer together would be really good. Where this becomes a problem is on the downswing when your arms are this far apart it's really hard to keep the radial deviation or the wrist hinge long enough you tend to start unhinging your wrists and you see this one all the time elbows apart and it looks mm -hmm. like a putting stroke by about halfway into the downswing keeping your elbows closer together is what keeps your right wrist extension and the radial deviation in there longer oh yeah you know that oh yeah yeah i, figured I think we've did. done this a few times we have we have I'm trying to say it just a little bit different every time don't do your putting stroke in the middle of the downswing and you're about to do that okay so let's go down to where his lead arms parallel to the ground and you see the same kind of problem with slicers all the time but i talk about all the time here because this is the biggest problem in golf right here on the downswing is the positioning of the shaft relative to the rest of you um, can you just draw a line on the grip end of the club we'll cut away to that uh, your tech swing go version there and you see how the shaft is further behind Cameron who's just hitting these balls really straight if anything he might even hit little cuts and you notice how the angle of the shaft cuts through the base of his neck on our golfer here on Dom yeah, and Cameron's got that moving through closer to like the middle of his bicep here's a good clue for you for my favorite color in it, base. oh really red Okay. The last line I drew. Oh, gotcha. Blue. Nice job. You Good can ask job. mine later. That's how we'll, we'll end this one, if anyone's curious. I'm not. Okay, so then the shaft is more horizontal again. I'm trying to open up to you. I want to ask you questions. I want to learn about you. Just, you don't care about me, though, do you? Just the way you look at me, I'm like, I probably don't want that kind of caringness. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is harsh. Okay. All right. Well, let's keep going. Back to what's important here. All right. Not your feelings. Back one frame. Oh, that one stung, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's nothing? okay. You got nothing. It's okay. You can't stop with the banter when we're off camera. Okay, there's the club head. Can you draw a line straight down? And you see how that's in line with the ball. That's way too soon. Here's Cameron's club head. Almost, yep. And you see how that's still moving in to out. So the path of the club at this point in time is programmed at best straight but really it's to the left pretty significantly so you want to be able to keep that shaft in long enough so that's why the down or the back swing keeping your elbows together and your right wrist extended is a really nice position to have even on the downswing. that's how you keep the shaft further behind you pull your arms apart open up the club face if you keep that same relationship coming down into the ball you got a problem and good players have learned how to stand the shaft up like we saw before but not this one a lot of these down the line views with no real ex uh, discussion about your game kind of all look the same shafts too high club faces in line with the ball too soon and now you're just going to rip across this couple that with the fact that even from the side view it definitely looks like your hip sway and shoulder sway are too far away from the target relative to uh, how a good player would do this and you're just setting yourself up to wipe across every ball slam the club into the turf like you did on this shot and this leads to a lot of swearing a direct correlation to your club head being here and swearing and a direct correlation between your hip sway at this point and the amount you're going to swear when you play golf mm -hmm. it's a very scientific study i've seen it before well, i swear on the golf course all the time i believe it i bet you do right. blue okay all right so i'm going to care a little bit then what's okay. your favorite color no not yet not at the end of this wow hold this stand over here that's a you got to keep people hanging on this one, Connie. All right, so first I would do the, uh, just put those wherever you want. Okay. Hold that club up on my trail ear, the shad, the grip end. Closer. No, no. That's why I was very specific about this. We're having a bad day. This isn't going to make it better. All right. Okay. All right, so then first you could start with, I got to hit this ball, not hit my, you don't have to move it, just keep it there. Uh, not hit my ear into the shaft on the way down, which is part of what he's doing as well. Mm -hmm. And I might just start there. That would start moving the low point of your swing or where you hit the ground up. Harder to hit behind the ball, step one. That would be always step one in golf. Try to keep your hip and shoulder sway or the amount they move toward or away from the target in line with like how tour players do it, okay? 
Then the next one would be on the backswing and the downswing. You need to feel like your arms are as close together as you can and that your the grip end of the club is pretty much around like the uh, belt high and that far around me. Ridiculous as that is, that one had almost no uh, hang time at all and that spin axis tilt is crazy to the to the left. A couple, both of those, I would do them at different times and not the same time to get started. So hit 10 balls where somebody nice, nice, is holding I'm the club up nice. by your head. So you say, all right, so then you hit a ball, don't hit the shaft. Okay, if you can do that 10 times, you're on a good track. Then the next part would be just the butt end of the club feels like it never gets above your waist and stays in a lot. As crazy as that feels, that'll help you a ton with the swing direction. Would you say something different? No, perfect. Are you I'd sure? Say also, I feel like there's a wall behind you, keep touching it. Okay. That's always a great. Um, well, show them what you mean. Put people. that thing down. Put that thing down. Um, Put that thing down. Uh, yep. You can, you, can, you can do this too. You can participate. This is boring sure? when I'm talking. Yeah. You so sure you want me to go ahead and set up? Yep. All right. So I'll be the wall. Okay. Not a target. I'm the wall. Okay. Well, okay. you can start off by not using a golf club. Just mm -hmm. use your hands. Good idea. You definitely just feel that just getting his hands more back. Yep. So you'd so be feel able like to... you're touching the wall with your hands on the way back. Where he, he is currently just there. Yep. It's not touching the wall. On the way down, keep touching that wall as long as possible. So it's basically the same feel as what you're doing. Yeah. Feel like you're really, really flat here getting flat as possible on its way through as well. Mm -hmm. So same feel. Okay. But you know, with low. the wall, you can actually feel Use a real wall instead yeah. of my hands. Yeah. Don't use my hands. No, thank you. No. Okay. Uh, was that it? Yeah. I mean, that's Do you have a, any more? No. Was that's... that it for our swings? Uh, I think so, yeah. There's only three swings in there. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions? I do. I heard we had a lot of questions. Oh. <sighs> You're going to answer them all. First one. Yes, sir. First one. John wants to know... Part of my swing, as yep. he records the swing, and doesn't know what to look at. Fights a bad slice. What should I be looking for? What line should I draw? Okay. Wow. Blue. Blue. It's blue. I still yes. remember. Should we go here and then just draw the line there? Because it's probably uh, the easiest Kevin, way to do that. can you do that? Yeah. Oh, I thought like we pushed the button right on time. Amazing. All right. So All the countries, Kevin. Question is, uh, what do you do if you film your swing, you hit a lot of slices, you don't know what to do with the swing video, hopefully we're teaching you what to do with that, and what lines do you draw? All right, so on the way down, in the mm -hmm. downswing, when that lead arm is parallel to the ground, yep. you want to draw a line that goes through, say, from the shaft downwards, just like I'm doing here on the right with Cameron. Uh -huh. And you want, what you want, especially for, you know, you want to get into our swing path, start hitting little draws, you're going to want that line to intersect or, or around, you know, closer to the elbow. So the lower it is, the more into your arch you can swing. The higher it is, so I'm going to change this to red, where Dom here on the left. Yep. Not your favorite color, by the way. I know. It's the opposite of blue. Yep. Um, see where that's kind of cutting across his neck there? That uh -huh. is a no-go. So you're definitely going to be slicing it if that's where that club is um, cutting across. Okay. So it's a great line to draw. On the way down, uh, easy to see. And then as you're coming into where that shaft is parallel to the ground, that's also a good indicator of if you're going to be swinging into out or out to in. So I know that's blurry-ish there, but if we look at where Dom's club head is there, like we mm -hmm. talked about earlier, way out side, he's definitely going to cut across this ball. So yep. yeah, it's definitely a slice there. Cameron's coming from the inside here into that golf ball. So those are two really good places to start that on the downswing. Good advice. Yeah. What like about it. you? No, I think that's good. You uh, definitely, um, almost everybody who hits a ball, the first place I start is lead arm parallel to the ground on the downswing, mm -hmm. just to see the shaft in the face. And then we can either go backwards or just fix it from there. Yeah. That's the place to always start. I wish um, there was content really built around that. That'd be a fun series to do someday, Brad. Why do you dissect your own swing and help yourself? Uh, like a big, big, nasty, many video kind of series that no one has the kind of time to make. But I think it'd be really good for golf. So the shaft parallel to the ground, or your lead arm parallel to the ground, how high is that relative to you? And to be real clear, the way Connie was explaining it, where this red line intersects like you as a person. You know, so that's going about through the bottom of his neck. Cameron, when he does it, 
as a person, it's intersecting close to the middle of his trail arm right here. There's just a massive difference in there. And that is what your swing direction is at this point in time. That's why most people slice. Their swing direction on the downswing at this point in time is way too far out. That was good. Then anytime you can get to about where the ball is and go back a frame or two, you'll really get a good picture of how the club's approaching the ball from this down the line view. And the way I would shoot the down the line video, this is pretty good. I'd try to get the center of the camera on your stance line or real close to it and put the middle of the frame about the middle of you. Yeah. Pretty good. I think Dom's friend knows what he's doing. Yeah, there's something to that one. Absolutely. What uh, what else? What else you got? Okay. Because I hit a lot of golf balls at the range. I don't have anyone to hold a stick off my ear. Is there another training aid, something I can do with a range bucket to help me improve not hitting my head? Oh, something with like a range bucket. Um, sure. So you could do a lot of different things. If you wanted to just do this one by yourself, take your foot while you don't have a friend or Connie to stand here and hold the shaft. You could take your foot, turn to the side like this, and scrape like the straightest line you can and make it pretty long. See how I did that? Look pretty graceful. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'm just going to make swings and practice not hitting that line and still looking at the target after I hit the ball. So it's not just stopping when you hit the ground and you're done. You got to keep going. Then look back at that divot that you hit on the ground and recognize where it's at. If you just got better at that practice just through trial and error, um, that would help a ton. You could go pretty far with that one. If you had like a... You use a T as well if you didn't want to destroy your shoes. True, but I like the, there's something about it. It's just a guy thing, I think. Drawing the line with your foot. I don't have to bend over, use a T. Yeah, I want it to be kind of messy. Yeah, my yeah. cousin's from Asia sent me these shoes, so I don't want to ruin them. All right, well then if you don't want to ruin them, scrape your, scrape your T in the ground, that'll work out great. Um, something you could do with like a range basket, sure. Uh, we're slightly short on range baskets, but let's do like a, uh, got a head cover someplace over there. Brad, you're not doing it. How about that water bottle right there? Oh, trash can. Perfect. Oh, that's disgusting. All right, so you can put this here. And on the backswing and the downswing, I'd put it right up against your foot. And you're going to do your best not to hit your shin into this and not even to feel like you're putting any kind of pressure into your shoe there. If you did that, couple that with your, your foot scraping line because don't use a T. Then you could practice, uh, you'd have a good way of helping. This would be a direct relationship of how much you'd move your knee and your, uh, your shin and your ankle to the center of your hips. As you move those away, the center of your hip starts to move away too. So if you can not apply any kind of force to that uh, range basket and hit the line in the right spot, I think you'd be onto something right there. I'd film myself from the front. And on the follow through, you can notice how my foot I don't know if you can see that or not, Kevin, but if you can, now my ankle and my foot and my shoe are a couple of inches away from the basket. They're not pushing into it either. I would try to actually get my foot as much on my toe as I could, but keep my heel as far away from that as he could in the follow through. All that again is just helping you push your hips towards the target, not hitting behind the ball. Is that creative enough? Yeah, very creative. I really get tired of saying the same thing. Try to say all these things. Uh, that was a, a lesson a very smart man instilled into me. Of don't say the same thing all the time. It gets boring and it's not, you got to test yourself a little bit. Yeah. So that's a good one. What else you got for a question? That's it? All right. Awesome. That was a lot of talk. You did a lot of talking today. I did, didn't I? A lot uh -huh. more than before. Yeah. Did you have a question you wanted to ask me? Yeah. What's your, uh, what's your favorite color? Oh, well, that's a great question. I can't believe you asked me that. Um, I have a couple. Um, first one is um, blue number three. And then I'm a big fan of um, brown with magenta undertones. That's blue number three. So thanks for watching, hanging in there. You did a great job. Thank blue. you. Blue number three is the better color relative to the blue you like. Oh, wow. Okay. I just like them all. It's like all the blues? Yes, okay. all of them. Agnostic. All right, guys, uh, yet again, please send your swings to YouTube at golf, wait, yeah, YouTube at golfpick.com. And we would really love to hear what your problems are. So when you send it to us, please write in there um, what your problems are, like you're struggling with at the moment, so we can help you with that. And thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week, maybe. And also include your favorite color. Yes, we would love to know. We will definitely read that We one. would love to know. Yes, that'd color. be great.